Welcome back. Today on Dialed In DIY, we're going to tear into an electric stapler to see what's inside. This one doesn't work anymore, so I'm going to pull out a DC motor, some switches, and a whole bunch more. Just as a little safety reminder, you're working with electronics and sharp items, so be careful what you touch and how hard you touch it. So let's get started. This is your standard swing liner stapler that runs off four AA batteries, or you can plug it in with a wall wart and run it that way as well. First thing we have to do is locate the screws that are holding the outer shell together, and in this case, they're under these four rubber feet that are attached at the bottom. Oftentimes, if you don't see any visible screws on the bottom of a case like this, your best bet is to pull those feet off and take a look underneath. Let's get the screws out and move forward. Now that you got the screws out, all you need to do is get a little bit of a prying action and this bottom piece will come right off. What you're left with is the power connection stuck on with a couple of wires holding this little plate in place. Just pull that off and you can continue forward with this project. Now what you want to do is grab the LED as well as these little battery connectors that are held in place with some wires and pull those free. This will open up some space so that you can get onto the next step. Press the button on top of the stapler and that will actually eject the staple tray and you can remove the front guard off that staple tray and then you'll find some more screws that need to start coming out if you look close enough. Those have to come out so that we can separate the top part of the body from the bottom part of the body. Grab the top and bottom at the back of this and start to pry it apart and you'll notice that it will separate pretty easily. The next step requires a little bit more force though and that's where you're going to grab the front and start to wiggle that section off. You may hear some cracking or snapping. If you're not going to put this back together then that doesn't really matter but uh, that's the approach I took. Hey, guess what's inside? Yeah, you got it, a whole bunch more screws. Those all have to come out too. As you can see here, I've got a red and white wire connected to a device that is actually a switch that's held on with one screw. Remove that screw and this whole thing will come loose. This is a neat little switch that can be used for another project in the future, so I'm gonna set this aside and keep it too once I remove it. You'll find a little plate held in place with a couple of screws that's on top of the gears on the outside here. You need to actually get these off of this so that you can get to the last two screws that are holding the base together at the bottom so you can get rid of the rest of the shell. Once these screws are removed, you can actually lift off the entire gearbox assembly. This is fantastic because now you can get to that motor. The motor's connected with a green and white wire. In order to get to the motor, I'm going to start to disassemble the entire gearbox one gear at a time. Once you've gotten to this point, there's usually not much of anything locking the gears or the little gadgets down in place, so a little prying motion can usually get all of these off. Since I don't always know what I want to use the motor for when I'm taking things like this apart, I'm pretty careful about getting the gears out. That way I can reuse them if I need to on a future project. On this little gearbox, there's actually a couple of screws that hold the two sides together. Once I take those screws out, everything starts to come apart quite easily and you can get to all the remaining gears as well as the motor. I'm also going to keep this cool long spring that was used to hold tension on the staple slide. I'm now going to gently pull the circuit board free from the base, but we're going to be careful doing so so that we don't mess anything up. Some of these we may have to clip the wires on, and we will in just a second, but the other ones that we don't have to, we're not going to. I did clip out the motor and a switch because they were wired through holes and then soldered in place, so the only way to remove them was either desolder them or clip them. The staple slide is the track running down the middle. To get that out, all you have to do is lift it up at one end and pull. This stapler had been broken and I wasn't trying to repair it, so my goal was to salvage parts, and this is what I got. The staple slide's actually perfect for a prototype that I'm going to make to help someone out with something that they'd ask me to make, a hidden blade. In addition to the gearbox, there are a bunch of other components that I'm going to use, including that little red LED and three different switches that I pulled out of this, plus everything else that's still sitting on the circuit board. And of course, I'm not going to forget the DC motor with the drive gear still attached. That's going to be perfect for a project I've got coming up in the near future. This was actually a great salvage because I've already got at least three projects in mind for the parts that I took out of this. In addition, some of these switches are great little momentary switches that I think I can make some fun prank ideas out of as well. So come back in the future and I'll uh, point out what I used out of this when I make something new. Thank you for watching. Please press like and then subscribe. There will be more dialed in DIY to come.